Hey everybody, welcome back to our Sparkle All The Way video series. We're doing a 12 days of Christmas thing where we do a different video every day for the first 12 days of Christmas. And today we're gonna to be doing some kid-friendly or beginner-friendly projects. Really great for anybody, if, even if they've never touched anything jewelry making. Um, so the first one, of course, is classic just stretch bracelets. These are perfect for everybody and really, really simple. The pattern's on there so they know exactly what it's supposed to look like so it'll come out perfect every time. Everything's in the bag, all of the beads and the stretch cord. You will need a little needle. And when we're working with kids, we usually give them these little safety needles. Um, it's much thinner, it's just like a twisted wire, basically, and it's not sharp. So even if they poke themselves, they should be fine. And then your magical best friend here, little bead stopper. This is gonna hold the end of the cord. I'll show you how it works in just a second. Um, so that way they don't uh, lose all their beads off the end. That will save your life many, many times. Um, so even though the needle is a little bit different, the concept still works the same. You've been given a two foot piece of stretch cord in your bag so that way we can double it so it's nice and strong. And you're going to put it through the eye of the needle and pull it until your tails are even. Okay, they don't have to be perfect, just good enough. And then your little bead stopper, squeeze the little Mickey Mouse ears open until they open up and just lay the string down in one of the cracks. Doesn't matter which one, just don't try to poke it through this side because it'll never come out the other side. So lay it down in the crack, let it go, and try to get it towards the back so that way it's holding good. And give it a good little tug, make sure it's really on there pretty good. Okay, so you have needle on one end, bead stopper on the other side. Okay, um, so when we're working with kids, I always tell them, start laying your pattern out first and make it look just like the picture so that way everything matches up really nicely and that way they don't have any issues with totally like messing up the pattern and making it look like something crazy mom's happy everybody's happy they look like they have you know an actually nicely done bracelet okay um i'm being kind of lazy with these because it's just all solid red ones in the back so you don't particularly have to put those in order um also when you're doing stretch bracelets if you find whatever bead has the largest hole in it to start with it's going to be more likely that the knot will hide in there but if you look at these red miracle beads that are on there they all have huge holes in them so no matter where we start for this project it's still going to work out um, but some of the other bracelets they don't have as big of holes in them so whenever you do it just kind of look through the beads and find one that has a decent size hole in it so that way when you two tie your knot it's a lot more likely to fit in there for you and the only one with this one in particular is make sure you have the little wrapped candy in spacing the right way. It's so cute. And then we'll just string all the red ones for the back portion of it. And with kids, most of the time, they're going to be smaller than this adult size bracelet. So try it on them before you tie it so that way you make sure that it fits. And you can just have them string it all the way up and then take some of these red beads or whatever it is off the end before you tie it. All right, so I've gotten the whole thing strung up. Bead stopper is really handy. It doesn't mean that your beads cannot fall off. It just means that they are a lot less likely to. So you still need to be careful. It is still a you know craft project. Try not to make a mess. Okay, um, so now would be the time that you try it on. Um, and then let's say, you know, this is how many they need. You would just take some beads off. Okay, really easy to modify. Um, so this one, however, though, is standard adult, adult size. It fits just fine. Um, most people so we're just gonna cut it we're gonna cut the string right next to the needle don't cut the actual needle because it's still good we will use it next time okay and if you poke it into your mat you won't lose it okay it's really common to lose these they look um, a lot like the the grain of the wood in the table or the grain of the floor or they blend in with the pillows all kinds of stuff so try to stick it somewhere so that you'll remember it so that way you won't lose it okay keep a hold of your string so you don't lose it take the bead stopper off the other side and we're gonna tie. So just like tying shoes, okay, your first one goes over and under, doesn't tie a knot, okay, but it gets us started. Same concept again, over and under, and kind of bounce it a little bit to get that slack out of the knot. So two ties makes our first knot. And then one more time, over and under, bounce it again. So two ties, but three ties makes a double knot, okay? 
perfect. So we are actually gonna glue this knot because we're grown ups and we can handle it. But if you're giving this to your kids, I would either do the gluing for them or don't let them glue it. Maybe have them put like clear nail polish on it or something. I don't particularly suggest that for um, kids, I mean for adults to do, just cause it's not as strong, but for a kid, it's a lot safer than giving them this glue cause this glue is out of control for kids. I would not give this to a kid. Um, so what I'm using is bead fix glue. Um, it's a clear liquid based glue and let's just show it to you. Can you see how it's doming out right there? It's about to drip right there. Okay, one drop of this is enough for like five bracelets. That's way more than enough. You don't need a lot of glue. Okay, so what I want you to do is, let's see if we can get it to focus really good. Okay, so just let it come out and then touch it on the knot. And then right under here, you can wick the excess back up in the bottle. Okay, so you want as little glue as you can get on there because this stretchy cord is very different than most that you may have used. And I'll show you after I cut it. Um, so we're going to cut it as close as we can to the knot, but don't cut the knot in half. Okay, and if you saw, I cut two and two um, because they're going in opposite directions. So that way I can get a lot closer. And then you'll just slide your bead over it to cover up the knot. And it's good to go. This is dry already. Okay, okay so let's talk a little bit about the cord, um, what makes it different. So if you start picking out this cord, let's see that one. Okay. Can you see this right here? That's still like 10 or 20 strands within that, just that one little one. So there are hundreds, if not thousands of strands inside this stretchy cord. You have to break through all of them to get it to break. Okay, so it's very strong and we doubled it. So it's gonna be really, really strong. And when there's so many cords like this, it's kind of like a fiber, um, just like your shirt. So if you drop glue on your shirt, it's still gonna kind of wick into the fabric. Well, it does the same thing on the knot. So whenever we put the glue on there, it soaks right into the knot and then through the back, you can soak up the excess and it just draws all the way through the middle of the knot rather than other cords that are just like one piece of rubber, it can go around the knot, but that's the best that you're ever gonna do. So this is what we suggest using. Um, you can get it on our website. We've got the glue, the needles, the stretch cord, everything that you need, um, but that's pretty much the only thing that I use. And I put a one year warranty on the bracelets that we sell in the shop and I don't ever have any issues with it. So I trust it, you know, quite a lot. Uh, if you have any questions, I would be happy to help you with that. And I think we actually have another stretchy tutorial on our channel somewhere else too. Because um, we do tons of these guys. So, all right. Kid-friendly stretch bracelets. Super fun. It's quick. They can feel successful with it. And it's not very difficult to do. They kind of can't mess it up. And it's pretty cheap. You know, good for the pocketbook. So, all right. Let's move on. Okay, the next project that we've got, super kid friendly, but it's really fun for adults too. It's just really great because it pretty much requires no skill and looks really, really cool. So it's kind of just like abstract art. We get lots of compliments on these. It's great for using up single beads. Um, if you have leftovers, just kind of bead mixes. This portion is just an ornament hook just to kind of show you what you can do with it. All we're going to be making today is this ornament here. Um, so this one obviously is red with an iridescent ball. You can see it's kind of glowing a little bit with different AB colors. Um, we've got one that we've done that was just different shades of green. And then we've got red and green mixed. And it's always fun to throw in a little clear and wire filler. That's really easy to do. And then today I'm actually going to be doing white, clear, and rose gold. And I'm going to use rose gold wire. So that's going to be really awesome looking. It's just a little neutral, but it fits my color scheme a little bit better for my house. So it be really, really cute. This is fun. We did these as make and takes, um, I think a year or two ago. And oh my gosh, we had a line of people waiting. These were so fun. We just set up a big station and let them go for it. It's really, really, really simple. Um, all you need is 22 gauge wire. I cut a couple of three foot chunks just because that's a manageable amount. I'm either going to use two or three of those just depending on how full that you want it. Um, for the ornament ball, it needs to be plastic. If you do the glass ones, when we're putting it in, um, they tend to break in your hand and you really don't want that for a child especially. So plastic is the way to go. It does need to have the little um, little cap with the wire on it so that way we can hang something on it. And then whatever selection of beads you want, I always say start with more than enough so that way you can kind of have the same color combination going. If you change beads or add beads in the middle of the project, it's not gonna be consistent. It's gonna look like you changed projects in the middle. 
and then um, a dowel rod or just a pen actually either one will work and for mine I'm just gonna be using a pen it's just what I had on hand it's about a quarter of an inch round um, you can change the size of a little bit um, what it's gonna do is the little coils that are in here it's gonna make them bigger or smaller that's what we're wrapping around it um, so for sure it's got to fit in the hole or it ain't going in um, and if you make it too small, it's probably not going to show up that much. So I don't know if I would go much smaller than this. Um, but if you wanted to go a little bit bigger, maybe like an eight millimeter or so, this is probably about a six millimeter wide, uh, pen. Um, so roughly about a quarter of an inch. That should be pretty close to getting you in the ballpark anyways. Um, and then also you need to make sure that your beads, whatever the biggest one, they have to fit in the hole. If you pick out beads that are bigger than this, it's not going to work. Okay. All right, so like I said before, we cut a kind of a manageable chunk of wire. It's about two or three feet. Um, you just don't want your kids, you know, flailing wire around the house and knocking stuff over. So to get started, all you're going to do, and you can straighten it if your wire is very kinky, but if it's not too bad, it should be fine because we're about to twist it all up. So starting on one cut end, all you want to do is just wrap around a couple times. You can do it close together or far apart, doesn't matter, whatever you prefer. You can squish it or you can pull it, doesn't matter. It's all getting shoved in the little ornament ball anyhow. And then on the long end, that have not has not been coiled, add one bead. Slide it all the way down to the end. And then grab your dowel or pen or whatever you're using. And then right above the bead, you want it to be kind of close, just grab it, hold it with your finger, and wrap around a few more times. You can be consistent with the count if you want, like everyone have three in between it, or you can be totally random. I kind of think it looks better if you do it random. But whatever you want to do, it's your project, and it's not going to be wrong either way, so you can do it however you like. It will still look good. So add on another bead, slide it down. Hold it right above the bead, wrap it around a little bit, take the pen out, and then add on another bead. And I just kind of do them randomly. I don't really worry about a pattern because we have multiple chunks of wire here. So it's all just going to get kind of put into the ornament and then mixed up as best we can. So. It doesn't look like much now, but it'll be really cute when we get it done. And it eats up a lot of wire fast. I'm already like over halfway through. And it doesn't matter if they're kind of messing up this other end of the wire because it's all going to get used on there. Anyhow, it's just going to get coiled in. And if you wanted, you can put two beads on the same one and then just coil it after if you want to. There's really no rules or rhyme or reason or anything. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would do a whole lot more than two just because it's going to look kind of clunky and it might make it heavy where it would kind of um, want to try to sit on the bottom a little bit more. So it's just personal preference. Play with it, try it out, see what you think. They come out different every time. There is no two of the same. But as long as you start with, you know, a big batch of beads that all matches each other, like the color scheme is all the same, it will all match. So you can make a whole set of these ornaments if you want to. And that'd be really cute. Gifts for like grandma and grandpa or something, you know, let the kids make it themselves. Really good teacher gifts. And it's very inexpensive. We sell these kits for $6 and you get like the mix of the beads and the ornament and the wire. So really good kind of inexpensive craft they can't really you know mess anything up with it and it's pretty simple and they will, will feel successful that's kind of the theme of this one simple enough that anybody can do it and you need to feel successful when it's over like it will look good okay so when you get done just kind of push it in so that way you don't have a big end hang off and look it's not even that long it's like maybe a foot long so that's why I said we're working with like three three foot chunks you may not use it all um, but just make up at least two and then we'll put it in there and kind of stir it around a little bit and see how it goes. Okay, so I will do another one and then we will check it out and see how it looks. Alright, so now we've got two of them. This one's even maybe a little bit smaller, but that's okay. We're going to starch it out a little bit. 
tightening. You don't want to pull it so tight that you totally undo the coils, but you want to stretch it out a little bit so that way it's a little bit more fluffy inside the ornament. Okay. And it's, it's just going to kind of look crazy, like the wire's going every which way. That is totally how it's supposed to be. Okay, so now we're going to start putting it into the ornament. So you're just going to start feeding it in. Okay. And it's just going to kind of do its own thing. There's not a whole lot you can do to control this at this point. I will show you in a few minutes how to modify it and kind of move things around a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and put the other one in there too. If you like it like that, you could just stop. But I want more than that in there. And since we're working with multiple pieces of wire, you could do two-tone also. You could do like silver and gold or silver, gold, and rose gold. Mix all of them together. All right, we're making progress. Okay, it's kind of hard to tell. I kind of think I might want one more, but we're going to start around a little bit and see. So the same pen or dowel rod that you were using, kind of stick it in there and just like stir it around, fluff it up a little bit and see, like actually, I think I might be done. It's really cute. And then when the lights hit this from the Christmas tree, it gets very sparkly. It's really pretty. If you wanted to even like drop some glitter down, I don't want to, don't know if you want to bring in glitter with your kids. It might be a little bit more of a mess, um, but you could definitely like drop a little glitter down in here or a little snow powder or something if you wanted. So it's just really cute, really simple, and as long as you pick the color scheme and the wire for the beads, it will still match your tree. So they're making something that's actually nice. It won't look tacky on their tree. Um, so you'll actually want to kind of hang it on your tree. So super cute, and then whenever you decide that you're happy with it, if you want another um, strand in there, you just get another piece of wire, make more beads, and put it all in there. Um, if you wanted to get really picky and kind of like position things, just take some tweezers in there. Oh, hello. And you can kind of like lift one particular one out if you want to, kind of move them around, fluff it up how you want it, and be kind of as picky as you want to. So then we're going to put the little piece back in there. Kiddos might need a little help with this part. Don't want them to stab themselves or anything, but pretty much that is it. Super cute, really inexpensive. They kind of can't mess it up. Like as long as you pick the colors ahead of time, it'll all go together and look nice, and they will feel successful, and they get to make their own gift. So really good kiddos gift idea. And our final project is gonna be this adorable Christmas tree and a bottle necklace. So in the kit, you get the bottle with the cork. The little screw eye is a separate piece. Oh, hello. Okay. So we need to put that in there. So what I recommend is Hold the screw eye in one hand, and you can see the cork tapers down to a littler on this side and bigger on this side. The cork goes, I mean the screw eye goes in the bigger end. Kind of aim for the middle and push it in a little bit just so it kind of starts it, and then rotate the cork. I found that's a lot easier than trying to rotate the screw eye every time, and it makes it a lot straighter. Okay, so go ahead and put that in there, and back it up like a half a turn. And we've got to bring the glue out again. Again, we don't want to give this over to our kids and just let them have it, so you need to do this part for them. Okay. Um, you may try a little clear nail polish, and it probably would hold good enough, um, but you need to do a tiny bit right at the base where the screw eye meets the cork, and then turn it another half a turn in there, kind of tighten it up a little bit. And that'll make the screw eye hold itself in the cork a little bit better. Okay. So screw eyes in the cork we are successful okay so also in your little kit you got a little package of snow I would suggest don't try to open the bag and dump it in the bottle it's going to go everywhere take your finger pinch some out and then put it in the bottle it's gonna be a lot easier that way and then little tree so cute and necklace chain and a little ribbon to tie a bow around in the neck of the bottle. Okay, so first thing they wanna do, and you can let them do this while you're doing the screw eye if you don't want them to mess with it, that'll kinda of give them something to do. So there's way more in than, there's way more snow in this thing than you will actually need. And you're just gonna to try to drop some in there. And if you wanna put something underneath it, to kind of catch the extra, you can. There we go. 
So that way you can kind of just put a paper towel on and then pick it all up and throw it away after it's over so you don't have snow all over your house. And they can put as little or as much snow as they want to. There's really no right or wrong way to do it. It's just kind of whatever look you're going for. And kind of tap it out a little bit and you can see about how much it is. That's kind of about all that I want, I think, in this one. All right, so the Christmas tree has to go in with the big end first because that's how it goes. That's the right shape for it. So I'm just going to push down on it and it just pops right in there. And then if you need to, to kind of readjust the shape of it a little bit, you can just take your tweezers and kind of prop it up with whatever direction you want to to kind of straighten it up just a bit. Okay, cute. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to move around a little bit because we're not like attaching it to anything. But it fits the bottle really well, so that kind of props it up on its own. So, should be good to go. Alright, now we are ready to glue the cork in. You have to do that because if you just put the cork in and they're running around, the glass part will fall while they're running around. So, you got to glue the cork in, but it doesn't take a lot. Okay, so hold on to the screw eye, or the very top of the, ball, the cork, whatever you prefer. And you just want a little glue around the edge of the cork. Less is better because if you put too much, it's going to fog up your cork, uh, your little glass bottle. So glue it and then just pop that back in there. Okay. Super cute. Alright, we're almost there. This would be a cute Christmas ornament too if you wanted. If you didn't want to make it a necklace, that would be really cute. Alright, ribbon. So it goes tied around the neck of the bottle here. And if yours does fog up a little bit, this is a really good way to kind of conceal it a little bit so that way you don't see it as much. So just lay the bottle down flat. And the first one, you have way more than enough string. We are not using all this string, but it's hard to tie when it's short. So we just kind of leave it on until after we're done with the bow and then we'll cut it. I have found that if you just go ahead and tie a full on knot with this, it stays a lot tighter and it's easier to work with. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and make the bow. Make the bow bigger than it needs to be and then kind of cinch it smaller to kind of perfect it a little bit. And they, the kiddos might need you to help with this part because they tend to get a little frustrated with it. But for the most part, they got to do all the rest of it. And if you want, when we have the kids up here doing it, I always tell them like, okay, you tell me how big you want the bows and um, you know, when do you want me to stop? Do you want it bigger or smaller? So that way they get to feel like they're doing it too. Okay. And then the other thing is they get to choose where to cut the tails. So how long do they want the tails? Some kids will be, you know, really specific. Some kids will just be like, oh, whatever. You know, whatever your child prefers. And these are cute for adults too. They're not just for kids. They're really popular for like um, nurses and doctors and dentists and teachers and um, people that get to wear kind of cutesy jewelry to work. Always very popular. Um, okay, so we're almost done, but not quite. See how it's kind of going a little crazy? If you take both the little bunny ears to the top and both the little tails to the bottom and kind of pull them against each other, it'll make it kind of seat itself a little bit better, kind of longer with the bottle. And then we're gonna put a teeny tiny drop of glue in the center of the knot of the bow so that way it stays together while they're wearing it. And then also on the tip of the ribbon so that way it doesn't fray while they're wearing it so it'll stay nicer longer. Okay, super cute. We're almost done. Very cute so far. Okay, so we just need to put a jump ring through the bottle and thread it on the chain and that's all we got left. And if you've watched any of our other videos, we've worked on jump rings a little bit. The split goes at the top, you take two pairs of flats, open it front to back, put your little bottle in, and close it. Okay. And then the ball chain that comes in here is 18 inches. If you wanted to do something longer, you're welcome to switch out the chain. And if you wanted to embellish with like another charm hanging next to it, like a snowflake or, you know, a little sleigh or reindeer or something, that would be cute too. But these are just so cute. They love wearing them and they're just, they're precious. They make really good teacher gifts and all kinds of stuff. Just super cute.
and something different that you don't, you know, see all the time. So really pretty. So those should be pretty easy and fun for your kiddos. I think they'll love it. If you have kiddos coming to visit, this is a really good project because it's pretty simple. They get to get a little messy with snow, but not too much. And they got to make something really cool. So that's actually going to be our giveaway today. Thank you guys for watching our little series that we're doing this season. Um, so comment below with a little emoji of a snowflake and one lucky person will get the Christmas tree in a bottle necklace kit for themselves. Normally retails for $12, but somebody will get one for free. So comment below and thanks for watching. Bye.